you know, close to normal as possible. Uh, the only tough thing is my right eye a little bit right now is suffering from a little bit of swelling and I can't really breathe out of my nose. But besides that, I feel, I feel good. I feel lucky. Um, uh, and just kind of excited to start this recovery, get back, doing what I like doing. I'm sure in the moment, a thousand different things cross your mind. And, and most notably, I'm sure it's, it's the pain that's overwhelming, but you know, what are those thoughts when just right off the bat, you're not immediately sure what, what has happened and, and what the damage might be? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I pride myself on, you know, being, uh, available. So I, I think the, my immediate re reaction was, was sadness that I don't know what the extent of what just happened was. And I know that I'm leaving a game and I know we were already, we've already been shorthanded with injuries and, uh, it was, it was frustrating. Um, you know, my initial reaction was to you know get up and go to first base and as I was on the ground it was I was bleeding a lot and I knew that this wasn't normal that this was more than just you know getting hit in the face that there's a lot of blood and that there's no way to get to first base and you know came back in the clubhouse and you know kind of had a moment to you know kind of assess what what happened uh I saw the doctor and you know, without any, uh, you know, x-rays or anything, he told me that, you know, your nose is deformed and it's, you know, more than likely broken. And, uh, you know, I had to take a moment to myself to just collect myself. I was sad. Um, it wasn't so much about the pain. It was just about the fact that uh, this team's gone through a lot. And like I said, I pride myself on being available and I don't always enjoy the results of, going out there every single day, but I do enjoy the challenge of being available every day and I enjoy, I enjoy playing. And uh, that's the thing that, you know, hurts the most. My, my face will heal, but my heart's broken right now. Cause this team, uh, this team's hurting right now. And, you know, I, I came here and didn't really know what my role was going to be. And I was gifted, uh, you know, an opportunity to go out there and play every day. And I don't take that lightly and it, it, it hurts. Thanks. Next question comes from Tyler Kepner. Uh, hi, Kevin. Um, glad to see you're, you know, doing, doing, doing better. Um, and good luck in your continued recovery. Um, I wanted to ask you, with your perspective in the game, um, it's getting more and more dangerous. It seems to get in the box. Um, why do you think hit by pitches are are up now higher than ever? Uh, I mean, it's 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 a pretty simple, uh, you know, answer. It just, I think velocity has become the, the prime primary factor in determining whether a, a guy could pitch at the, the highest level of baseball, uh, as opposed to pitchability. Um, uh, you're seeing more and more guys that throw hard and teams are hoping that they could, uh, develop pitchability and control and, a secondary pitch. Um, you're, you're, you're not seeing as many guys that throw in the lower nineties or, you know, 90 that have very high pitch ability with multiple pitches that get guys out. Those guys are kind of, uh, you know, a dime a dozen now. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, that, I think the biggest thing is just velocity is key right now and, and, and trying to develop the secondary part of pitching is, is, is something that, uh, all teams feel like they could, uh, once they get a guy with a big arm, they could teach, um, you know, but we are talking about something that happens very infrequently in this game. Someone actually being hit, you know, in the head or in the face. I know it's maybe happened a couple of times this year, but, um, you know, it, it is part of the game. Uh, I don't think. I know in this scenario, I can't speak about all the scenarios, but I know this guy didn't want to hit me. I know he didn't want to hit me in the face. Uh, the bases were loaded and it was a one nothing game and accidents do happen. So, uh, you know, in that regard, there's, you know, I know he feels bad. I know me and him have talked last night today and uh, I'm almost 
more worried about him than I am myself because I know I saw his reaction and I know how tough that could be on someone who feels, uh, you know, responsible for someone getting injured, how, how he feels. And I just tried to relay that message to him that, you know, I know that it was unintentional and he needs to continue to, to, to be confident and uh, believe in himself and his stuff and uh, that I'll be fine. Thanks. Good luck. Next question is from Justin Toscano. Hey, Kevin, good to see you. Uh, your son looks a little too young to, to know what went on, but what were the reactions of your wife, your daughter, and, and other family members who saw that? Yeah, it's, it's a, it was a scary time, I think, for my wife. They, they, they're back in California at her parents' house uh, on this long road trip, and uh, she saw it live. Luckily, it was kind of during their dinner time. My daughter didn't see it live. Uh, she didn't get an opportunity to see it. My son, like you mentioned, is obviously a little bit too young to, to fully understand what's going on. But, you know, my wife was scared. Uh, you know, obviously, new team. She didn't necessarily have a point of contact right away. Uh, you know, fortunately for her, the trainers on the other side were the trainers I had in Toronto for a long time. And she was uh, smart enough to, to, to know, to reach out to them. And, you know, once I kind of, uh, you know, saw the doctor in here, got some of the bleeding to stop and I was able to kind of, you know, get a moment to myself, you know, I called her and just let her know that I was all right. And, uh, you know, she just felt helpless. You know, I, I, she, she feels bad. I'm here by myself, but you know, I, I'm, I'm fine. And uh, obviously my parents too were, were scared. My parents are also on the West coast too, and they tend to, uh, you know, record the games and, and uh, you know, finish their work day and go to the gym and like to come home and watch it. And that was kind of interrupted by, you know, my wife reaching out and, and letting them know what happened, but, uh, you know, I think everyone, my family, my, my close friends, my inner circle, they know that uh, this is just a minor bump in the road that, you know, I pride myself on being tough and available and that I'll be all right. And, uh, you know, just tons of, you know, love and support from my friends and family over the last, you know, 24 hours has been uh, just overwhelming. And uh, Rojas said that when he saw the incident, like he figured there was no way you'd be able to walk off on your own. And another other of your teammates have said they're surprised. When you look back at that, does that surprise you? Was that just adrenaline or? No, that's just, that's how I was, how I was raised. Um, like I said, biggest thing for me is, uh, you know, I've played through injuries in my career. Uh, being available was, you know, most important thing to me the the statistical stuff became very secondary in my career and uh you know I think you know even the support that I've got from my teammates here and and people reaching out you know just you know saying that you're tough you know I've never seen anything like that is you know what I've always wanted to be known for and what I've always wanted to be remembered for not necessarily the numbers on the scoreboard I think you know, at the end of my career, I hit 230, 240, 250, whatever it is. I think, you know, if people talk about me as a guy that, you know, was reliable, was available, and, uh, you know, was tough as hell, um, you know, that's more than enough for me to, you know, ride off into the sunset with. Your next question comes from Dave Lennon. Hey, Kevin, glad to see you're doing okay and, and are able to do this today. Um, I, I, this may seem like a strange question based on what happened, but do, do you feel lucky in, in some ways that you that these were the, the extent of the injuries? What did the yeah, doctors yeah. maybe say to you that you were, you were lucky? Yeah, definitely lucky. I mean, I, the looking kind of looking back at the play, I feel like it just happened so quick. And, you know, I've had close calls. I've been – I've been hit in the helmet. I've been hit in the face before. And I just felt like there was always, you know, this moment where I was like, I can't get out of the way. And I do my best to get out of the way. This one, it just, it was weird. I don't know if I just didn't pick the ball up. If I was, you know, thinking about the count, the situation, like what I was trying to do, but 
the ball just got on me so quick and it hit me. And before I knew it, I was on the ground. It was kind of like a, almost, it was like a weird out of body experience. It was like, it was like contact pain. I was on the ground. And then I realized where I was kind of at in time, you know, thinking back on it. Yeah. I think I'm very lucky. I mean, I was staring, I was staring the baseball down and I didn't really even move, um, you know, to have hit me where it hit me. Uh, I'm very fortunate with, you know, the diagnosis that I got. And uh, like you said, I mean, a couple inches to the right or left, it's my eye and who knows what happens there. You know, if it's a couple inches higher, it hits me in the forehead, who knows there what happens there. So given the circumstances, I'm very lucky. I feel, you know, pretty damn normal right now, aside from my face kind of looking the way it does and not being able to breathe too well out of my nose, but I feel great. You know, I got no headaches. I got no symptoms. I, I feel, you know, pretty fortunate to, to kind of be sitting here and excited to go out there and watch these young guys go play a game today. I mean, and I think the other time that you got hit more recently, Kevin, I think was in the jaw. Maybe it was a couple of years ago. I think you played the next day, right? I, I played the same day. I didn't even come oh. out of that game. Okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> – so it wasn't to, hard. It wasn't hard getting back in the box again after that. No, no, um, no, it, it wasn't. I, I, and you know, I, I joke. I, I was joking about wanting to get into the cage today, not necessarily hitting, but just you know having right on right curveballs be thrown at me, whether it's one or two, and just kind of like let myself know it's okay. I mean, I don't. Obviously, right now, it's easy sitting here in shorts and knowing I'm not playing to say I'm going to be super comfortable in the box. It's another thing going to do it. But I also remind myself I've had over 3,000 at-bats in my career. I've been hit twice in the face. Um, you know, that's a pretty low percentage of happening. I think if I sit there and try to worry about that happening again, uh, it's such a small percentage of the at-bats I've had. And uh, – you know, uh, I think I'll be fine. I just think, you know, time's going to heal this and I'll, I'll step back in the box and people have asked me, you know, wear face protection or a face mask or anything. And my answer is probably no, you know, I've, I've, I wore the C flap a little bit after I got hit in the jaw and that was more cause I was a little bit sore, but when the season was over, I never put it back on and I've felt pretty comfortable in the box. So, you know, I just, I think it's just a matter of just get back in there and doing it. Thank next que next question comes from Bruce Beck. Kevin, wishing you well. Uh, this story bridges news and sports. I mean, my wife woke up this morning and, and asked me about you. So what kind of support have you received from the baseball community, from the general public, and how touched have you been? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's crazy to have something like that kind of make you, uh, I don't want to say relevant again, but I guess popular. I mean, I've heard from, I mean, right now on my phone, I probably have 160, 70 unread text messages. I mean, I, I see them all. You just, it's nearly impossible to get back to every single person. But from, you know, my friends that I went to high school with that are still, you know, close to me, my college friends, guys, friends that I've met uh, outside of baseball, uh, former teammates, players on other teams players just in the league uh even a couple players you know that are part of this small being hit in the face fraternity have reached out to me to make sure i was doing well uh people that i've never met you know fans people on social media uh the the outreach has been you know more than i could ever imagine but i think the the classiest though is uh you know, the amount of support that I've received from the Atlanta Braves. Uh, you know, obviously I've, I have a close relationship with uh, George and Frosty, the athletic trainers over there who I uh, dealt with for many years in, in Toronto, Sal Fasano, their, their catching coach, uh, you know, was a coordinator and a coach with the Blue Jays in the minor league system. But guys like Dansby Swanson that I don't know personally, Brian Snedeker, Walt Weiss, all people that I've never, uh, you know, met before, uh, reached out to me. Uh, Kevin Seitzer, who was a hitting coach of mine, reached out. So the, the amount of people on that side that uh, 
have reached out just shows that they're, you know, a classy organization, a bunch of classy guys. And I can't leave out, you know, Webb. Webb reached out to me last night. Felt terrible about what happened. We talked a little bit uh, when I was at the hospital, exchange text, and he reached out to me again today, maybe about 35 minutes ago, wanted to meet in the tunnel. Uh, we went over there, shook hands, hugged it out. You know, he, he reminded, he reiterated that he felt terrible about what happened. I tried to reiterate that it's part of the game. I know you didn't mean to do it. Uh, and I just told him to continue to be confident and believe in his stuff because his stuff is good. Hey, we've been saying stay safe for 15 months. I think it's apropos here. Be safe. Thank you. Next question is from Wayne Randazzo. Hey, Kevin, um, what are the next steps to get you back on the field? Um, so I met with a uh, specialist today, a plastic surgeon uh, here in Atlanta. He, he read my CT scan and x-rays and stuff. And uh, I have several breaks to my, to my nose. Uh, they need to be put back in place. That will take place uh, once the swelling reduces in my face. Uh, and that will probably be done by a doctor in New York. Uh, I think the initial plan is for me to, uh, when we get home, see the doctor on Monday in New York, talk about uh, when, when that surgery could be done. And, you know, I think they said 10 to 14 days after that, I'll be able to resume baseball activity. And my plan is to be, you know, back as soon as possible i'm going to do my best uh you know to get with our high performance staff and our training staff and, and figure out over the next you know handful of days you know what i can do and what i can't do to kind of just keep my body fresh and keep my mind fresh uh, and try to stay in the best baseball shape i can stay in and, and and really try to get back as soon as possible thank you your next question comes from tim healy are the hi Kevin? Uh, thanks for uh, coming on Zoom today. I know it's been a, a weird day. Are the breaks limited to your nose? That's it. I mean that that was the very, you know, going back to the previous question. Do I feel lucky? And the answer is yes. Uh, you know, from you know professional, the medical professionals that I dealt with, you know, last night at the hospital, plastic surgeon that I dealt with today. Uh, our team doctors, uh, the fact that it was exclusively just to my nose is, uh, you know, a blessing that could have been a lot worse. Orbital bone, cheekbones, you start to deal with some vision stuff and some eye, eye stuff that takes a little bit longer. Uh, the fact that it is just my nose um, will allow me to get back on the field a little bit quicker once it's, you know, set and put back into place. Uh, it doesn't need to fully heal before I can resume activity. It will be, you know, put in a position where, you know, breathing becomes normal again. And, uh, you know, it appears to be, uh, you know, better off than it is now, uh, but it will allow me to get back on the field, uh, you know, sooner than later. Sure. And, and which players who have experience with this sort of thing have hit you up so far? Uh, Charlie, Charlie Culberson, uh, who else did I talk to? I've had a, I've had a couple of people uh, reach out to me that have done it, and you know I think it's just you know nothing more than just you know praying for you, you know hoping for a speedy recovery. But uh, obviously a scary thing, something you don't you don't ever want to experience yourself. You never want to experience uh, you know witnessing it, whether it's you know uh, you know being on the same field on TV. You know I think it's important. You know as as much as uh, sports is about competition. It's also about brotherhood and camaraderie. And I think we all realize how fortunate and lucky we are to have gotten to this point and, you know, how very few people get an oppor opportunity to do this. And, uh, you know, within that, there's a little bit of fraternity. So, you know, that was, you know, definitely, you know, seen uh, over the last you know 24 hours with the amount of just people in the baseball community that i've reached out thank you 
Kevin, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I got nothing but time. So thank you. Be well, stay safe. Thanks. This concludes today's Zoom room with Kevin Pillar. Thank you for your time.